Hey guys, Rom Steele back here again. Um, so yeah, semifinals. Here we go. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a little bit. It, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Kind of just coming into the series. I'm, I'm expecting to lose. Honestly, I'm just because. Um, how last year's semifinals went for me, and also because this is the first time I'm against a higher seeded opponent. Um, so that means that he gets to pick um, not only which side we play first, but that doesn't really matter. Um, more importantly, he gets to pick um, if we go to game three, whether he gets to be shadow or free peoples with two tokens. And as I've said before, I feel like it's still very much in shadow's favor. So I'm kind of um, feeling like I need to get, I just need to get really lucky on. Um, yeah, one of either this game or game three, if we get there, is free peoples. Um, and I get a pretty lucky start. Anyway, he does the zero eyes, which, again, as I've said, I think is the correct way to play. Um, and this is some shocking luck for me, because not only does he not roll any eyes, but he also only rolls one muster, like one with hybrid die. So he can't even get Saruman this turn. And I've rolled three movement. So I get three movement for free unless he has lidless eyes, one of his cards. I forgot to ask him for his password. So we uh, get to play from my perspective where I don't know what cards he has at the moment. Um, okay, so I move. Um, I feel like you might as like, obviously I'm going to move with at least these two character dice. It's possible I could use that Will of the West for something else, but very unlikely. Um, so I figure I might as well move now. Just in, in the off case, he does have Lidless Eye. I might as well move before he plays it. Uh, but he draws a shadow card, which I think makes sense. Um, I go ahead and move the second time anyway, because obviously that's what I'm going to do. He draws another strategy card. Um, now I start passing just because I want to leave the threat of me doing something with the Will of the West out there for him, you know. Um, so he musters Sauron to war, which I think makes sense. That way you can at least um, capitalize on me not having a hybrid die to move this army in the way. Um, and he moves that army down to Gorgoroth. It makes sense. Um, so I pass. Of course, I'm not actually going to use my Will of the West to do that. Um, he successfully calls my bluff. Um, so he makes it into Old Forest Road. Um, and I play King Brand's men. Um, so King Brand... It's just a fantastic turn one card to get because Dale's pretty easy to conquer early on. So uh, if you don't get it early on, it's pretty likely you don't get to play it for mustering the two regulars. And uh, and yeah, now that makes um, that makes uh, the whole do line just a little bit messier for him, you know. Um, so he attacks Woodland Realm, which I think makes sense. Like like um, you could attack Carrick and then attack Dale to get the North to War, and then next turn you could get the Witch King, but at the same time, like attacking this 3-1, like that's going to get troops into Woodland Realm for sure. So is that really worth letting Woodland Realm get stronger? I don't think so. Because like next turn, he can probably just attack Woodland Realm a couple times if he really needs to, if he really wants to get the Witch King. So, uh, of course, I move a third time and he moves that army. Um, okay, so I get Riders of Theoden and Wizard's Staff. Wizard's Staff is always such a headache because um, you always it's so easy to kick yourself either way. Like sometimes you play it and then you never get hit and, and it just makes Gandalf the white slower. And then you go too slow and you lose. Or sometimes I've not played it and then gone on to lose by corruption. So it's, it's just, yeah, it's a very, like the cards kind of making fun of you either way, you know? Um, so anyway, um, so he allocates an eye and rolls two more this time. So like, that's already a stroke of luck for me anyway. Um, just zero eyes and then three. It's it's nice for free peoples when it comes staggered out like that. And I also don't have a lot of movement this time, so that works out reasonably well. Um, yeah, I was about I was in the process of typing pass when I realized that I couldn't. So that's why I say no passing for me, lol. Um, so I play what do I play? I play Riders of Thaden first. Yeah, just I figured I might as well um, cycle strategy cards. Hope to get you know scouts because that makes Dale um, even better. You know the odds of getting to escape all of those units off to Erebor. Um, or even better, Thranduil. Thranduil would have been better, but but that's okay. This is still a good start for me. Um, so he draws a shadow card. Oh, I missed that, that he actually just straight up picked up a card and chucked a card. Wow, I wish I'd asked him for his password so I could see what these cards were right now. Anyway, um, so I, I do decide to play Wizard Staff because, I don't know. Um, I guess I'm thinking maybe I can move once, and if I don't get hit, then I'll use a ring to move again. So that's helping me go faster. Um, or, you know, in the future, if I roll a bunch of movement, then I can be even more reckless. So I don't know. Um, so he plays a log high. That makes sense. That's probably the one he just picked up then. Um, so I move and I don't get hit. So, eh. 
Um, he attacks Woodland Realm, which I think makes sense here because if, um, if like, I don't know what cards he has, of course. Um, but if, you know, so the attack will move the elves one step lower. And again, we have to, sorry, I should have pointed out earlier, he only rolled one muster this turn again. So Saruman was still not an option. Um, but if he can get a nation all the way to war, then he can get the Witch King with that muster. So I think um, with this attack, he's, um, yeah, yeah, he moves the elves down one step. And then if he conquers Woodland Realm, then that's moving them down another step. So then he'd be able to get the Witch King. And obviously conquering a stronghold is a good idea. Um, so I played Daylight. Um, he gets only one hit. I get two hits back. So that helps. Um, and then, of course, he gets a plus one for Great Host. Um, so he presses. Um, yeah, and I don't have anything to play here. So, uh, And luckily enough for me, on six dice, he does not roll a six. Um, but I do. So I got one hit back. Um, so he presses, which I think makes sense. Like, it's still, like, on five dice, it's still more likely to get a six than not. Um, oh, and he plays a strategy card. Um, onslaught, yeah, to really get that Witch King in because he he knows that the Fellowship's already had a fast and safe start, so he he knows he needs to go fast and play with risks here. Um, okay, so he gets his one hit anyway. He doesn't need to use the onslaught. I don't get a hit back, so yeah, that would have actually that would have been a really tough spot. Like if he hadn't got a hit and he had had to take a couple hits with onslaught, like and say I'd rolled a hit back, then this might be just a one orc defending that conquered Woodland Realm right now. Um, so that would be a very tempting situation for me to like muster the north down to war and retake it at that point. But obviously this army is probably coming, so that probably wouldn't work anyway. Um, yeah, so I shuffle my armies along. It's always nice to get that um, extra reinforced army from uh, either the Red Arrow or uh, Riders of Theta heading out from Adoras to Helm's Deep. And of course he brings in the Witch King. So now he gets more monsters anyway, so now he can get Saruman for sure. And this is my role. So actually, I don't remember what I do here. There's a few different options. It's a little tough um, when it's just two eyes and you have wizard staff uh, because like, I need to move once, get hit, take wizard staff, move again, get hit again, and then kill Gandalf to be able to use that Will of the West. So I think the plan, I think I probably run right away. Yeah, I run right away and I don't get hit. Um, so he musters Saruman down, uh, Isengard to war. And I move again, just on the off case that he does have Day Without Dawn, I'd rather, because I need to move again, get hit, use Wizard Staff, then use a ring, move again, and then kill Gandalf to be able to bring in Gandalf the White. So, so I move, if he mustered that down again, then I'd move again, and then he musters them down again, and then I could bring Gandalf the White. So yeah, I, I remember doing the math here, and I need to move, move, move every single time. Uh, to be able to safely get Gandalf the White with, um, uh, without risking being hit by Day Without Dawn. Um, okay, so he does hit me. I use Wizard Staff. Great. And then he musters the Southrons down because I think he he knows that I've done that math too, so he wants to pressure me into using the ring right now. Um, so I do, and I move, and I get hit, and it's a two reveal. So I'm very happy to get hit. Like if it had been a zero reveal and an eye through Moria, again, that, uh, that's the classic worst case scenario. Um... So it's a two reveal and then a two would have been nicer to just get the two the first time, but this is still okay. Like it's, it's turn three and I've taken seven steps and I'm getting Gandalf the white this turn. So like, that's, that's a fantastic start. Um, so he musters the Southrons down to war, I guess, just to pressure me into doing that right now. Also, of course, I don't know what he has. Like, there's, uh, like you'll want to bring this army in to help with the do line for sure. Right. Um, so it's always kind of scary when, you have your when as free peoples, if you're out of dice, it just opens the world for the shadow player a little bit more, you know, um, namely Helm's Deep and Dol Amroth are the two like fairly weak strongholds off the start. So oftentimes if the free peoples runs out of dice early, there's a chance um, like for an army from over here to sneak in. Not really because I put this army here, but or this army in theory, he could get Helm's Deep under siege with it before these units could get there. That was something I was aware of and, you know, thought um, like getting to move the Fellowship this much and get Gandalf the White was just too valuable. So I, I ran that risk anyway. Um, he gets Saruman, of course, um, and then plays the Shadow is moving. Just pretty cool to get to do for the combat. Um, I mean, like like oftentimes it gets used for Storm Bats and that's good, but this is a very useful, like he has a Palantir and the military's got to go fast at this point. So that's um, advancing lots on the Gondor line anyway. Um, and then he gets to attack Osgiliath with this. Oh, yeah, yeah, so that's great. Um, so I'm not 
I'm still not sure in hindsight, actually, if he was like really planning on using the onslaught to like maybe like if he got one hit during the combat roll, which would be about average, um, then he could like take a couple orcs to hopefully finish off that last guy so that Minastrith wouldn't be at full stock. Um, or he might have just been playing it to cycle. I don't know. Um, but in any case, obviously, I scattered away, so that um, that doesn't help. Okay. Um, so he allocates one eye because he has to, and that's what I roll. So that is just barely enough for me to get to Mordor if he doesn't have Day Without Dawn. So I think he was bluffing last turn because I feel like if he did have Day Without Dawn, he would play it right now just to deprive me of the chance of getting to Mordor this turn. Um, I move. I'm not hit. Um, he attacks Minas Tirith. Um, makes sense. Move again, and I'm not hit again. So that's surprising. Like, three dice at six is a bit less than 50% odds to get hit. So that wasn't too shocking to not get hit. Not getting hit three at five, I don't know what exactly the odds are, but it's good anyway. Like, you you should be... Like, I was expecting to be hit here, you know. Um, so not getting hit is nice. But darn it, he has cruel weather. Um, like... Which is frustrating because I was that close. If he didn't have it right now, I was going to move again with the ring for sure. And pretty good odds that I'd get hit and revealed. Um, very likely that I'd get hit slightly over 50% odds that I'd get revealed. And then he couldn't cruel weather me. Uh, but he very correctly chose to cruel weather me right now in case I did get revealed. Because uh, that stalls me a whole turn right there. So um, It's a bummer. Getting into Mordor in four turns is... Uh, is quite something, especially, and it would have been in pretty good health, too. Like, I've only got two corruption, and I still have all the companions except Gandalf, so. Um. But anyway, um, now he attacks Pilar Gear because he, yeah, wants to go get Dol Amroth. Um, and of course, now I start mustering Dol Amroth. Um, he keeps moving along. Right, he decides to conquer Lothsarnak so that I can't muster in there. That makes sense. Um, I muster again a Dol Amroth, and he uses the ring to put it under siege, so I can't muster anymore next turn. I think that makes sense. Okay, so then it's been a little bit since I took stock of the cards I've got here, because the last couple, like, I haven't really had spare dice to you play cards much the last couple turns. Um, so I've got two Ants cards now. It's it's always frustrating being at eight cards, and most of these cards are good. I think Swords and Ariador is, like, the only obvious throw out here. Um... And even then, it's still a decent card. Like, you get to cycle a card or you get advantageous position. Like, it's not trash, but um, I would say certainly worse than all these other cards anyway. Um, okay, so I threw out Pass of the Woes in that one. Also reasonable. I don't really have an amazing spot on the board for Sudden Strike. Like, I was kind of hoping to save it for Erebor, because if this leader gets in there and if I get Dane, then that's three leadership there. That'd be a really good Sudden Strike. But, um, but I have no idea if that's going to happen, of course. Um... So I keep my Ents in hand because, you know, I'm thinking he's probably at this point, his 10 points are going to be Gondor and Dew, but these armies aren't that strong. So there's a chance that he'll pivot to Rohan or maybe Lorien. So that's why I kind of want to hold on to this and these. But then I guess the elves are at war, so I don't really need Caliborn. It's like, in theory, I should be able to muster ahead of time. Um, anyway, so he allocates one eye and rolls that. So three Palantirs is always a hoot. Anyway, um, I move because I figure, you know, um, there's nothing else that I need to do right now, so I might as well do that first before he, I don't know, hits me with Orc Patrol and reveals me or um, puts an Azgul on me. I get hit. I, I take it too. Um, I, I think I take the corruption originally just because I don't want to risk losing Strider because um, I really like having Strider for the Mordor track. He just makes it go so much faster. Um, but I decided to take a random because then I'm up to four corruption and I still have six companions in here so that can make the mordo track really deadly too like if he chucks like five eyes in there and i draw an eye then i kind of have to kill strider and i'm taking more damage that way anyway so um but yeah i draw gimli which is perfect so i take no corruption um and he attacks me Strith. i'm not sure what i do here um right i do play caliborns here because yeah like i said i should be it doesn't really look like he's going for lorian right now and if he does the elves are a war so i might be able to muster ahead of time anyway um, but his Swarm of Bath cancels my Daylight, so that's nice. Um, but my Daylight, me playing a card, still saved two hits, so I'm quite happy with that, because these two fives would have been hits if Swarm of Baths hadn't been used up canceling something. Anyway, um, so he gets one hit. I get three back. Oh, forgot that that went that well. Um, and he comments that I found all three Daylights. I hadn't even realized that I had, but but yeah, because I played Riders of Theoden for the event, and I used a Daylight in Woodland Realm and a Daylight here. That's all three of them, yeah. Um... 
Okay, so he presses, and he's using a character card, got in despair. Yeah, so this makes me even more at peace with um, taking corruption in the future. Like, because like if you're gonna try to corrupt the fellowship, this is an amazing tool for the job right now. Like, if he was gonna rely on putting a bunch of eyes in the box to try to kill me in Mordor, this is a fantastic card because I have this huge meat shield of companion, so it's, I'm not getting the golem. Um, so anyway, he forfeits his four leadership to attack safely. I don't get a hit back, and he rolls two sixes on five dice, so that's that's better luck. Anyway, um, I move again. I get hit. I don't get revealed. At, at this time, I take a random again, and I lose Strider this time. So that feels bad, losing it at one and five, especially with Athalos in hand that I've had since turn one. So, uh, so I'm wondering at that point if I should have played Athalos first. Um, I still, I'm not actually even sure what the best play is here. Um, there's a lot of options with these character cards here, like because I can play Ents cards and then chain them into. We proved the Swifter, so I could have put Gandalf and Minas Tirith to help defend it, or I could still put Gandalf and Dol Amroth to help defend it, or I could play Othlos to heal the Fellowship, or I could play File of Gladrill because I'm about to be in Mordor. Like, there's just there's a lot of things to do with these dice here. So, anyway, um, but I lose Strider. At least I lose him efficiently. Um, that still feels bad though because I had Othlos since turn one, so I'm feeling like a bit of a um, cotton-headed ninny muggins, as they would say. Um, so he draws a strategy card. I pass again. He attacks Minas Tirith again, and he uses Deadly Strife. So, yeah, you'd expect at least three hits. Uh, I get three back, but that's not really a big deal. Um, uh, he plays Shulab's Lair. I play I play one int card. I get two hits. That's fine. And then I play File. So I like to, if you do have more than two ents, sometimes it can mess with your opponent if you only play one, because I don't need to play more right now. And I don't really want to commit Gandalf to putting him in Dole Amroth because I don't have any cards that make him useful there. Like I don't have a Brave Stand or another Daring Defiance if I use We Prove the Swifter to put him there. Um, and also he's not that close to winning, so I don't want to lose my fifth die already. Um, I figure Athalos I can wait to play later, whereas getting File in now, you know, then it's in there for the whole of my track up the Mordor track. So, so anyway, that was my thoughts. Um... Right, and then I muster the dwarves down here because, again, these armies are not that strong and I think it is, like, I've 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 just made Rohan even worse for him now that this army is weaker. Um, and I also have this other Ents card for if he does go after Rohan. So now I'm thinking if I can muster the dwarves down twice here, and then in the future I can muster them down again. So if he does just want three points from here, I can still fight him for Dale. Um, so that's going to make his life difficult. And if he wants Erebor, then obviously I'm mustering up. So... Anyway, these are my thoughts. Um, so now he moves Nazgul around. Um, so again, I think about playing We Prove the Swifter to get him into Dol Amroth, but what if he has Grond? And like, I don't have any good cards really to play. Like if he has, and he's got four strategy cards. Like what if he has another Deadly Strife or like a good Relentless Assault or two? Like I I might just lose Gandalf in one round. Um, so anyway, I just mustered the dwarves down because that feels like a reasonable investment anyway. Um, he plays Rage of the Dunlendings. I was very happy to see them go south. Like, after he mustered that elite there, I thought, okay, he's coming for Lorien. Um, because I, I used Caliborn's Galadrim as a, as a combat card, you know. Um, so I thought he was going to come after me here. And I thought about, with those two dice, I thought about mustering in Lorien and Rivendell. Um, but I'm, in hindsight, very glad that I didn't. Um, okay. And then I pick up the third end card. So now I'm very excited about what's going to happen here in Rohan anyway. Um, I declare in Mordor, obviously. Um, he allocates one eye, which I think makes sense. And I get another great roll. Um, two Wills of the West, two character dice, and a muster. Um, just like, that's perfect. Um, I move right away just in case I do get hit with Day Without Dawn, you know. Um, and it's a three, so that's splendid. Love it. Because um, I get to take Boromir, and now I can chain all four of these down. So if I run into an eye, then I'm all the way down to Gollum. So that feels good. Um... So he attacked Dol Amroth. Um, he plays a card. So I debate about playing Confusion here, or if I just give the Stronghold up for Lost and hang on to this Confusion for a Helm's Deep, because I think I'm more likely to win that battle. I, I think I end up playing it anyway, just because he does only have a four hit point advantage on me. So if I get lucky here, this could still um, get stalled out pretty hard for him. And Celeborn, uh, sorry, and uh, Kyrdan and Imrahil are both still out there in the strategy deck. So if I happen to pick up those, and this went well in the first place, then I can make this a real pain in the end. Pain in the bum for him. 
Um, okay, so he uses their terrible and gets four hits. So that doesn't feel good. In my confusion, I get one hit. So the downside is, of course, if I sent Gandalf here, then he would have saved them from these two hits because there'd be no Nazgul leadership. But then again, he might have played something else. Uh, who knows what would have happened. Um, yeah, yikers indeed. Um, I roll three hits back, though, so that's a total of four hits for both of us. Um, so he presses because... Um, obviously, you want to go fast. Um, he can see, of course, that I don't have any strategy cards anymore. So that's another downside to me playing Wisdom of Elrond for the confusion there. So I, I can't threaten Kyrdan's ships or Emra Hill because he knows I don't have any strategy cards. So, um, so he plays Desperate Battle, and he gets two more hits, and I get two back because of the Desperate Battle. So, um, so he presses, which I think is reasonable anyway. Like if I had a good card here, like like I don't even have a leader, so I can't play Heroic Death, and the Shield Ball won't help me. So like there's nothing I could play to stop him here really. Um, and all he needs is one six from six dice. Um, be right back. Okay, I'm back. Um, but like, like I was saying, all he asked the dice for was one six on six dice. Like, you should he should have gotten it, um, but he didn't. So that's very lucky for me. But I, I get the six again. So um, I think luck has definitely been my way so far this game. Um, so now seeing how close that went, now I'm kind of wishing I'd put Gandalf there because this would be an even better spot for me right now if I had. But but oh well, here we are. Um, I decided to move again because. I don't know. Might as well move now. I think he just drew a character card in that cycling. So I'd rather move now in case he picked up a red tile. He's going to put that in there. Did he? Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, he got to draw another character card here. So um, so I move. It's a zero reveal. That's great. I've got plenty of movement. You know, um, that'd be even better, of course, if I had Strider or Gollum as guide, but I'm still very fine with that. Um, so he gathers his armies together in Orthanc. So um, I think he's officially coming for Helm's Deep. Um... So originally I passed thinking that, okay, if he attacks Ford of Eyes and then I'll use the Will of the West to bring those guys in. But then I think, what if he hits me with Day Without Dawn? Um, unlikely, because I feel like he would have played that by now if he was going to. But but yeah, so anyway. Oh, right. I also wanted to save the leadership from Ford of Eyes for if the, in case those two guys got wiped out. So that's why I do that. Um, right. Then he plays Shadows Gather to bring the reinforcements for Dole Amroth. So now I go back to being glad that I went with my original plan of not putting Gandalf there. Um... Yeah, so now he attacked Dol Amroth, and now it really should be dead. He cycles towards power. Yeah, there he goes. Now he gets that six, and he finishes it off. Yeah. Um, so there goes Gondor. Um, I hide. Um, he upgrades Orthanc. Um, and now there's a question of what to do here. I could muster the dwarves to war. Um, that would certainly make the dew line grosser for him. But I'm kind of thinking, like, he only needs three points. And, like, between this army... And these armies, there's a good chance that he can either get Rohan or he could get Helm's Deep and Dale. Or this army could go get Lorien and be right back again. Ha ha ha. I should really, I, I should stop bothering to say be right back because obviously, like, it's a YouTube video. You guys aren't going anywhere just because I took a break in between recordings. But I kind of can't help myself, you know, it's just autopilot. Um, so anyway, but my thinking here was that I have two rings left to use, and there's a good chance he can get to 10 points this turn, so I'd rather use one of these rings now um, because I'd, I'd rather, you know, make sure that I can actually get there this turn, and I'm still in pretty good health. And I'm thinking, even if I hit an eye, like, yes, that's five damage, but I've got all these companions I want to burn through anyway. So, um, yeah, so I use a ring, and I move, and it is an eye. So that is five damage, which is a lot. Um, suddenly corruption, like, it's a danger now, but I'm still only on four, and I only have two steps to go, so I, like, should be okay, right? Um, and he gets the mouth, which makes sense. Um, so now I pick up Gwai here and power two great. So great cards for stalling out here. Um, for if he does go for Lorien and Gwai here and we prove the Swifter are great for moving Gandalf around. Um, and of course I still have Athelas to play too, if I do need to heal a bit. So I'm, I'm feeling good. Um, but he is on 10 dice now. So that helps. And I get another two will the West and two character movement and an H. So that's even better than the last time. Cause it's an H instead of an M. Um, just, yeah, so comment on the amount of W's I've rolled, plus five Wills of the West. That's insane. I've never had that before. Um, I hide because, obviously, you want to use these. Um, and he had the red tile, so, <laughs> don't like that. Um, I figure I might as well move because, I don't know, what else am I going to do? Obviously, I want to move. And it's the red tile he just put in, so, 
that's quite disheartening. Um, is if that had been like anything but a red tile, that's fine. Like an eye is only two damage in a reveal, and I have plenty of movement. Uh, of course, file glad just been in there this whole time, and any of these regular tiles are fine. Um, so the question is, um, do I reveal to only take two damage, or do I stay hidden and take the whole three? Because um, three is going up to seven. So that doesn't feel great. Like I have two steps to take and five damage will kill me. So that's not amazing. But at the same time, like I said, he might get to 10 points this turn. Like that's not impossible. So I don't know. It's it's tough. I, I end up not hiding, which I don't know if that's the right call or not. Um, so he attacks for the Vizen. Makes sense. Um, he spends one muster mustering up first, which I think makes sense because one of these you can make an attack with the Mouth of Sauron and the other one he can use a ring on. And then he has two Palantirs, which I don't know what his cards are. Maybe he has Fighting Uruk, maybe he has Ring Racer or Broderick Black Captain Command. So, um, Okay, so he attacks forwards and rolls two sixes. So I'm very glad that I moved that one regular and leader away. Um, and he doesn't get a hit back. So I make a mistake here. I play Ents to kill Saruman and then Gwai here to put Gandalf in Helm's Deep. And yes, that's a good move, but I absolutely did not need to play it right here. Like as, as soon as he took another turn, I was like, oh, I might've just thrown away the game. Um, because why not wait until he's put Helm's Deep under siege? There's absolutely no reason to not wait for that. Like if I think this is strong enough to hold him off, I might as well wait, you know? Um, yeah, just doing this like this means that if he does want to pivot and go somewhere else, um, I, he hasn't committed that extra die. Like if I'd waited till he'd attacked, because like you'll see, now he's going off to Lorien. Um, so if I just waited, then he would have spent a whole nother die getting here. And then I'd have Gandalf in there and no Saruman leadership because Saruman's dead. So yeah, then it would be a whole two extra dice wasted if he was going to Lorien. So this is a huge mistake on my part. Um yeah, so he's nice enough to let me take a turn again here. I decided to muster in Lorien first because originally I was thinking, oh, I can muster in Lorien and then he'll besiege me and then I'll play We Prove the Swifter to put Gandalf in there. But now I realize, like, why make myself play We Prove the Swifter if I don't have to? Like, I could just muster here. Then if he moves again, then I'll move Gandalf over there with the character deck. Um, so he takes out Arrest and moves along. And then I put Gandalf in Lorien. Um and he uses a ring to move this guy back to West Mnet, and then uses a Shadows Gather to bring these guys back to West Mnet. Um, and then he uses Black Captain Commands. So that makes even more sense why he didn't want to use a ring on a Palantir, because he had both of those cards to use, which are very good uses of a Palantir. Um, so now he gets Helm's Deep under Siege. Um, yeah. So that, that's our, our game of ping pong between Gandalf and the Wargs, kind of just bouncing back and forth here. And next turn, I can play We Proof the Swifter to put Gandalf back here in Helm's Deep anyway. Um, so I'm, I'm reasonably pleased about that. And of course I have the who are in dark card, which I, I think is, is my favorite out of actually, no, it's my second favorite out of the three combat cards. It's the best for this situation though, where I just want to hold on. This is the best. If it's earlier in the game, I like nameless wood better for the assassination potential of the witch King. That's the one that adds two hits. If you scored any hits at all. So that one can take people by surprise. And that's, that's good for blowing up the witch King anyway. Um, and also brave stand. And no quarter of those are good combat cards, too. So I'm uh, certainly certainly have thoughts of putting Gandalf over there. So he rolls all these dice. And I roll another solid turn. Um, three more movement, anyway. Um, I still need some luck, anyway, here to to dunk. If I run into Shelob, then I'm toast. Or three and then an I would be bad, too. And what do you know? There's the three. Um, so I decided to take a two reveal here because I do have both these character dice. Um Maybe I actually should have just swallowed it as a three and then played Athalas. But then again, maybe I get a zero on Athalas anyway. I don't know. Um, because this way, yeah, I'm opened up for Morgul Wound. So, yeah. So then I hide just in case he has more stuff. So that Morgul Wound was huge because um, now if I move and get an eye, that's two damage and then I die. Whereas before, when I was at nine health, I could take an eye and that would be fine. Um, that being said, he doesn't know what I have. If I still had Bilbo's song or there is another way, then that would be great. Um, he attacks Helm's Deep. Um, we both play character cards. So I, I lead with the Ents card, of course, because where else am I going to play it? I'm not going to play it anywhere else this game. Um, 
eight plays there, terrible. So he gets one hit. It's about average. And I get four hits. So that's very good news for me. Um, yeah, so I kind of... I didn't bother moving Gandalf because I kind of just wanted to hurry up and dunk this turn. Um, so I draw a card here instead of... Like, I could play Othalos and then move. But I have a ring anyway, so I think I might as well pick up a card just in case I pick up something better. The something betters out there would be either... There's another way, Bilbo Song or Mithril Coden Sting. And I got Mithril Coden Sting, so that's great. Um, so he draws another character card because like, he knows, obviously, I might dunk right now. So he's trying to find something to hurt me. I play Mithril Coat because... So the Hunt Pool right now, um, there's three eyes that would kill me. Shelob, which would most likely kill me. It would just have to be a three or higher. Um, and it would stop me, so that would also probably mean I lose. And then there is six tiles that I like. So 60% um, odds of winning. Um, but with Mithril Coat and Sting, then it's way better. Um, because even if I draw one of the bad ones first, um, lose on the 40% odds, then it's three out of nine. Um, so I need to lose... 40% and then 33% odds in a row to, to die at this point. So um, whatever card he just picked up apparently wasn't useful for corrupting or stopping the fellowship because he just proceeds with attacking. Um, because you never know, maybe I run into Shelob and bounce back, so it still does matter for sure to get to 10 points. And also if I wait, then he's also cycling character cards, so he might draw something else to hurt me. Um, so he gets one hit, and I get one plus one because no quarter. Oh, right, and his foul stand to cancel my leader. Uh, should pre roll. Okay, so he does not press. And I think about it for a bit um, because I could wait. I've already moved this turn, so I don't have to rush it right now. But also, he just drew another character card, and he can do more cycling here at Helm's Deep. So even if I do survive to next turn, my odds might be worse next turn anyway. And my odds are pretty good right now. Um, so I give him my last ring to take this step, and it's a zero reveal, so I don't even need to use Mithril Coat. Um, that's that. So, whew, man, terrifying game. I was like up until about halfway up the Mordor track, I thought I, you know, more or less had it in the bag just because of how good my luck was. Like I rolled tons of movement. Um, yeah, still plus five on Wheels of the West, minus zero on character, uh, minus two on planters, minus two on ages. So like, that's, that's great. If you give me that every game, I will never complain for the rest of my life. No. And um, let's see, he had plus five on Palantirs, plus three on H's. So overall, he's still plus one for attacks, but plus five on Palantirs and minus three on Musters certainly doesn't help, um, especially the lack of Musters early on just meant his military game got off to a bit slower of a start. Um, let's see, plus two for sixes, minus five on fives for him. So that's like fives are pretty important. So I, that's about a, like a bit poor luck anyway. Um, and plus one, plus one, six and five for me. So. Um, yeah, also just the timing of things. Of course, I got those three movements for free at the start of the game. Um, so yeah, that was that. Um, I think, I think we both played pretty well. I think we both made a couple mistakes too, but, um, but yeah, no, I think a good game on the whole. Um, and, and I'm obviously very relieved to have won the game as free peoples. Um, so hopefully I can, um, win the next game as shadow because I don't, I, like, I fancy my odds much better as, as shadow than as free peoples with two tokens. So. So hopefully I win the next game. Um, yep. Thanks for stopping by. Have a good one.